Hi everybody, my name is Nick Zambo and I am a virtualization sales engineer with uh, Citrix. And uh, a couple weeks ago, we had our annual summit. It's a conference where all of the internal employees and partners get together to learn about all the new things that Citrix is releasing and well, our vision and what's coming. And uh, there were a good number of uh, cool announcements, but today what I want to talk about is the uh, Citrix X1 mouse. Uh, it's a prototype. Uh, everybody that came to the conference got one, and um, it's really cool, so that's why I want to share it with you. So uh, <clears throat> a lot of people say, well, it's just a mouse, but uh, I, I actually think this is a, a really a big game changer in the world of uh, being able to use uh, virtual desktops and applications on uh, the iPad form factor, which today is something that I think a lot of people do, but uh, a lot of the complaints are just that it's a, it's a small form factor, especially on something the size of an iPad mini. It's just not big enough to realistically work. Uh, additionally, um, if you've ever worked with it, pinching and zooming and uh, and uh, being precise with your movements is, is a challenge. So uh, this mouse, what it allows us to do is actually just use a, a mouse within our, our Citrix receiver. So uh, part of the reason that this is a, a big deal is because there are no other Bluetooth mice that work with the iPad. Uh, in fact, it doesn't even work at the iPad level. So we actually bring it up in the stack and now we're supporting it within the receiver itself. So um, <clears throat> what I'd like to do is I'll, I'll kind of show you the difference between what it looks like when you're pinching and zooming and navigating that way versus uh, the mouse, uh, but also uh, some tips and tricks because uh, if you do have one or have access to a mouse, it is a prototype and uh, it's not perfect. So let's look at how we can work with it and then uh, you know actually get it to use day to day. What we have here is my uh, iPad mini and you can see that I actually have this guy enrolled in Zen Mobile Enterprise. I've got Works Home, I've got Receiver, all my mobile apps and uh, virtual apps, so uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, Outlook, and my VDI. Um, typically I would probably have uh, SAP here and some other stuff, but uh, for today's demo we just got just have a subset. So what I'll do first is kind of give you the overview of what the experience is like without a mouse and then we'll kind of look at the benefits. should be very quick, but then I'll get into some tips and tricks along the way. So I'm just going to go ahead and launch PowerPoint. You can see that that flips through, uh, get, passes into Works Home, and that will subsequently pass authentication through to Zen App, uh, <clears throat> where PowerPoint will launch. So we'll give that just a moment. So a few seconds later, PowerPoint pops up. I'll hit my blank presentation. And so here, here's sort of the challenge is um, we can get started, of course. You can tap pretty easy stuff. I've got my keyboard <clears throat> off to the side. I've got my Logitech keyboard and the mouse is over here, but I'm not using it yet. Uh, but I can type here real easily. I, I'm no problem. But then the challenges really begin because these icons up at the top are pretty small and I have big fat hands, so it makes it challenging to uh, actually get what I'm trying to, to hit. Similarly, uh, these, these corner grabbers are are kind of the bane of my existence uh, with a touch interface. So there's a lot of pinching and zooming. Uh, generally, I'm able to grab it, grab that and resize it, but it's just not precise enough, mostly because it's gross motor control. I'm using my whole arm here to uh, move my hand over the screen, my triceps and my biceps, and it's just it, th those muscles aren't good for precision. So it makes it uh, a challenge to make sure that the boxes are lining up exactly where I want them and so forth. So uh, it even gets worse, actually. Actually, um, I have this Logitech keyboard with a dock on it. I can actually stand my iPad up, and then my hand is actually moving between the keyboard and the mini, which is even more more so uh, a, a non-precise movement, and it, it's tiring over time. So um, that's that's kind of some of the downsides to having a non-touch-ready interface. Uh, so this is where the mouse really comes in, and, and of course. Windows apps uh, are on their way to becoming touch optimized, and we're doing a lot to facilitate that. But for the applications that just aren't there yet, a mouse is a really great solution. So uh, what I'll do next is actually show you how that works. So um, let me slide the screen over. I'll make sure I get my X. See if that actually, there we go, don't save. And that's gonna drop back. So first tip is um, since we're using, uh, since we have this R1 uh, prototype receiver here, uh, R1 sort of like labs receiver, uh, one of the things to kind of make sure that your mouse is going to work and it's not gonna have any um, interactions with other, other apps on accident or cause a problem is I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, 
get rid of these apps. I'm going to get rid of Works Home and Receiver, Safari, all this stuff, and just, just get rid of it so it's uh, easy to use. Uh, and what I'll do now is, um, before I even get started in R1, I'm going to come over here and take a look at my mouse. You can see the slider. I've got uh, the Bluetooth icon, uh, so this little round thing, it's off is what the, this stands for. I've got my connect button. Uh, and the, the important thing about this prototype is this slider goes up and down. I haven't figured out what the difference between up and down is, so I'm just going to slide it up to the Bluetooth icon. The mouse turns blue, but really no nothing here happening on the iPad. Um, the R1, uh, I, I think I mentioned it comes from the App Store. Just search R1. It's the only one out there. And this is required for uh, the prototype mouse as well as any advanced features that, that we're, we're trying out within the receiver. So receiver from the store is what you typically use in production. R1's got some special features. So I'll go ahead and tap that. Mouse is on. And so when R1 starts, the mouse turns blue and we get a pairing request. I think that's probably a little hard to see, but it's a t traditional Bluetooth pairing request. It says Citrix X1 mouse would you like to pair? So I'll go ahead and hit the pair button. And right away, you can see this <clears throat> mouse icon right here on the screen. Now, interestingly, uh, there's a bit of a layering effect to this. So this mouse, uh, first of all, let's jump out to just the iOS. There's nothing out there. Uh, this mouse is not supported on the iOS uh, operating system. It's not going to allow you to interact with any other applications. It is specific to the R1 receiver. So we'll come back in. And um, additionally, using the mouse will not actually invoke any of these launches. So you can kind of see what I'm saying by a layering effect is that there's almost this presentation layer uh, independent of the mouse. So uh, in this case, uh, I do have some broken icons in here. This is just a test environment, so that's why that's like that. But I do have my PowerPoint. I'm going to go ahead and tap that. It's actually going to hit the same backend uh, servers to, to retrieve my PowerPoint. And I think this is going to ask me to log in because it was shut down completely. Here comes my authentication screen, and I'll go ahead and type that in. All right, I've got that typed in. Hit enter, and this will pass me through to Zen App. So this is not integrated with Works right now, so that didn't it didn't take the Works authentication and pass that through. So that's why it was a specific uh, receiver-based authentication. And here comes uh, PowerPoint now. And the, the end result is not mind-blowing in and of itself. It's just nice to see that we're able to accomplish some of these more uh, precision tasks within the, the uh, I, iPad form factor. So you can see now I'm able to move my mouse around the interface and interact with PowerPoint. So now I'm able to actually grab uh, these, these corners with precision, double tap to uh, double click to highlight and so forth. So there's some real nice just, you know, the traditional type of ways that you're you're used to working with a Windows application are now totally available on the iPad, right? So I'm actually able to type uh, in addition uh, so that that Bluetooth keyboard is connected, but also my my mouse is connected. So it's it's this can be done very much on the go. So similarly, um, I mentioned the, the layering. You can see this uh, the, the I, uh, iPad drop-down window here for your Control-Alt-Delete and, and so forth. Notice that this is not something that you can interact with uh, with this mouse. And it, again, just kind of speaks to that layering uh, methodology. So I'm going to tap that and hit Home. And I'll just launch my uh, VDI. And that should pop up here pretty quick. I think I have that running in the background. And, and that did pop up, and you can see I actually have I'm actually doing some administration in my uh, in my lab, and so I have uh, RDP back to some uh, some backend servers, and I'm I'm just on my normal desktop here. So uh, this is just a fully functional uh, you know mouse within a desktop environment. Uh, can't understate the amount of ability this gives. Uh, uh, just as an example, on the trip back from Summit. Uh, where I where I got this mouse, uh, I was on the airplane connected to uh, y, uh, Southwest Wi-Fi, uh, able to connect to SAP and, and work within that application, enter all my expenses uh, on the small little tray table that you get uh, in on the airplane, and it was uh, real estate was not an issue. Uh, I typically carry a uh, 15 and 16 inch laptop, uh, which is a bear to actually use on an airplane. So this this really was a, a nice thing to have. But now, uh, now to really kind of the, the, the important stuff, because it's a prototype and, and if you do have access to it, you're probably going to run into some issues, uh, most commonly around if the mouse turns off uh, like this and then we turn it back on, uh, you can see that, that that mouse disappeared. 
and it's not going to easily come back, unfortunately. So I can hit home and come out and maybe come back into R1, and there's there it is. But there's there's still no mouse. Occasionally you can actually see, like, we'll be able to highlight and drag, but there's no pointer. So there's just some some nuance about this prototype. So uh, really the, the methodology that I've been using, it's kind of a, a two or three step process, but it's quick. Uh, and I expect when the, the production receiver and uh, production mouse are ready, this will not be an issue. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kill R1. And then I'll come back over to my settings. You can see my settings on iOS and tap that go to my Bluetooth settings and you can see the Citrix X1 mouse is actually paired as a Bluetooth device within the iOS uh, uh, preferences and I'll just tap the little info circle here and forget this device. Are you sure you want to forget it? Yes and now the mouse is, is no longer a piece of the uh, uh, it's not paired and I'll also go over here and just kind of turn this off and that resets us back to a good state. Um, I'll go ahead and hit home and we can repeat this process. It's really easy. So I'll come over. Um, I'll turn this mouse on. I have had good success turning the mouse on uh, prior to launching X or R1. I'll tap that and we should get that pairing request as soon as R1 starts. In fact, that mouse turns blue and we'll hit that pair request. And now we're back to normal. So kind of a pain dropping back killing it out and but the the, the downside is is that uh, you'll get some some flakiness if you're uh, constantly in and out of the production receiver versus the R1 receiver um, and so that's just a kind of a tip along the way additionally uh, there there is a limit to the number of devices that can be paired at the same time I was actually uh, getting really excited about this and decided to try and pair my uh, Logitech keyboard with the mouse as well as uh, I, I got a Bluetooth speaker uh, just that, that, that can actually pair up and since audio is redirected through the receiver into iOS I was hoping hey maybe I can get some audio through here and while it does work uh, bear in mind that this this Bluetooth mouse uh, is is a very chatty uh, item over Bluetooth so the more the more that you're trying to send across that Bluetooth channel the slower this mouse is going to become and so streaming audio at this time at least the mouse would move maybe um, one out of every two clicks so it was really sluggish trying to get across the screen and uh, so I would just recommend keeping the Bluetooth devices to a minimum uh, and definitely uh, airplay is a kind of a neat option that you can airplay your desktop up to your TV, but that, that also consumes uh, not Bluetooth, but, but wireless traffic. So it's just a lot, especially the mini form factor, uh, lower, end, uh, lower end processor, slower processor. It's going to take a while, uh, and it's not a very smooth and seamless experience. But I expect that, again, to kind of come along the way as the devices are more capable. And the uh, last little tip here is uh, you can see I'm, I'm just going to Google uh, X1 mouse uh, Citrix. If you need any information, frequently asked questions or so forth, there is actually a, a home page. You can see here the Citrix X1 mouse, which leads to the discussion forums. And thanks to uh, Google, you can see that they actually the second hit is the uh, prototype mouse discussions forums within the Citrix support forums. And we've got the giveaway going on right now. Looks like another kind of maybe some spam. and. Um, the instructions themselves. So if we look at the instructions, uh, there is a PDF there, and that PDF contains some really nice information about uh, this pairing sequence that I talked about, as well as some limitations and, and so forth. So check it out. Uh, if you got, uh, if you have an SE, ask them to use their mouse because it's it's pretty slick, and um, hopefully we see this out pretty soon. So thanks for listening today, and uh, good luck.